We have two Disney Star Wars films now, each with their own director, tone, and cast. Today, we determine which one's better. It's The Force Awakens versus Rogue One on Movie Fuse. Force Awakens takes place a few decades after the events of Episode 6, so some of the fresh faces aren't so fresh anymore. They're weathered. They're showing their age. Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher reprise their roles as Han Solo and Princess Leia, with Hamill hopefully getting a far more expansive role in Episode 8. Chewbacca, R2-D2, C-3PO, and even Admiral Ackbar come back into the fold. But it's the new cast of fresh-faced younglings that really gets me amped up for future episodes. The cute and plucky Rey gives us our first real female lead Jedi in the new Star Wars canon. It was teased in Empire that Princess Leia too could have been a great Jedi, but that was washed, squandered needlessly, and what we're left with is the dry, brittle remains of a once hopeful young, fresh-faced woman. The internet quickly turned on Rey, saying she's too perfect, and used the stupid term Mary Sue to describe her. It's very obvious in the flick she has no idea why or how she's doing half the stuff thrown at her. It seems very likely that she's just powerful and the force comes more naturally to her. I remember conditioning my body for many months to win a downhill skiing competition to save my grandpa's old lodge. I lost miserably to Josh Turkin. The guy didn't study or train a lick. He just was naturally more gifted than I was. He even got the blonde cutie that I was aiming for. Won her heart. He got high fives from all his comrades all while an 80s song played in the background. My point is, people learn at different paces and some are just more naturally gifted than others. Plus, we're one episode into this new trilogy, so shut the hell up. Let her have a chance to develop more. Finn and Poe were excellent additions and their interactions were some of my favorite in the movie. BB-8 steals the show for audiences by rolling into our hearts with his infectious beeps and boops. <laughs> Rogue One takes place between episode 3 and 4, so our cast is mostly different. Jin Erso, played by Felicity Jones, leads the cast. Ugh, two female leads in two Star Wars movies? Gross. And I also heard she was paid the most on the cast? What is happening, Disney? Stop ruining my Star Wars! Sarcasm aside, she was just all right for me. I thought Daisy Ridley really brought the emotional weight to her role far better than Felicity did. Jin was a bit too bland, and I never really got a connection to her or any of the others in Rogue One. She does have the sexiest overbite in the galaxy, though. I'll give her that. Mm. I'm not going to pretend I know the name of a single other character in the flick besides the old throwbacks. They are all very one note, and they have more than three letters in their name, which confuses me. I need things really dumbed down and simplified. There's a blind guy, big gun guy, sketchy past captain guy, the dude from Nightcrawler, and a smartass droid named K2SO, voiced by Alan Tydic. There were some fun cameos from A New Hope that I won't spoil, but I have to mention the jarring use of CG for certain individuals. It wasn't the least bit convincing, and it was a really odd choice to have them so front and center. Why not put them in the shadows a bit, or shoot over the shoulder, just give us a back shot? Darth Vader is in the trailers briefly, and although he only has about five minutes of screen time, director Gareth Edwards uses them superbly. I think his portion really props the whole film up. Horst Whitaker's involvement as Saw Gerrera was a bit puzzling. He didn't bring a whole lot to the story, and his accent was pretty laughable. I was also a bit let down by Ben Mendelsohn's Orson Krennic. Mendelsohn is a fantastic actor, and I was looking forward to his involvement in this episode. He just doesn't have a whole lot of purpose or menace, unlike Kylo Ren in Episode 7. Ren is by far the most interesting new addition to the series, idolizing his fallen grandfather while also struggling internally with his place in the galaxy. Much like my grandma, the Force has made him angry and a bit bipolar. I lastly want to address the fish race in Rogue One. I'm sure there's a technical name for them, but I'm calling them fish people. Um, I loved it. I think it's stupid as hell and fun as hell at the same time. I want to see a spin-off. Just focusing on the fish people. And that dumb captain spinning around in his chair that's all white is pushing that box. Oh, we need reinforcements! We need to help them now! I want a whole movie. It's all of it fish people. Remember A New Hope? I remember. So does episode 7. There are tons of videos breaking down all the similarities, and frankly, I just don't care. The cinematography, the effects, the direction, it's all handled so well. I think the story is great, too, up until the final act, where we once again land with the giant planet-killing device. It's a shame, because I thought everything up until that point really delivered. Rogue One didn't hit me with the same excitement, which is understandable. It's been a long time since we had a new Star Wars on the big screen, so getting Force Awakens was exciting, it was new, it was in that universe. 
But then only one year later, getting Rogue One is just, eh, okay, we, we have this again, and now we have another one next year, and I don't know how long the momentum is going to keep up, but I, I could tell you right now that going into Rogue One, I was, I was just thinking, okay, I know what I'm going to get. Wow me. Granted, it is told in a much bleaker way, with a more muted color palette and far less happy protagonist. The first half suffers a lot for me in terms of pacing and all-around interest. There are moments of greatness, like the excellently shot blind force fight, but there's just too much dedication to needless things. If this did anything, it made me appreciate even more so how well Lord of the Rings handled its characters. I, I fell in love with them instantly, I was on the journey, and any time one of them perished or was in peril, I was worried. I was scared. In this film, I didn't have the connection with anybody. I already mentioned this before, but the final act of Rogue is a sight to behold and really makes up for the first half's shortcomings. The beach battles, the grand space battles, a stupidly cool ramming ship, a thrilling hallway massacre, and a final shot leading right into the events of the next film get you pumped up. I would lie if I said I didn't miss the lightsaber battles, but thankfully I can just look back a year ago and watch Kylo Ren's terrific fight in the snow with Rey. Star Wars has never come even close to looking this good before. The costumes, the sets, the CG for the most part, and the sheer scale is breathtaking. Like all things in this feud, it comes down to personal preference. Do you prefer the high production value polish in Awakens or the more gritty, less steady cam of the midquel? This isn't a knock on what Rogue One became, but I am really getting sick and tired of seeing movie trailers that contain footage not in the final product. It's getting absurd. There's like 20% in these movie trailers that aren't even in the film. Where did they go? Look at these clips. None of this was in the theatrical release. Enjoy. None of it. Look at this epic shit. Where is it? I know there was extensive reshoots, Disney, but come Get your house in order. I really wanted to see that shot of Jin running down the hallway in her tight little outfit. I wanted to perm out on that. And you took it from me. Ripped it right from my heart and soul. So now I have to hope that you come out with a Blu-ray release that contains some of these extra tidbits so I can scrounge around trying to find that tight pant shot to get my perv on. Because that's the kind of person I am. A pathetic, weak individual that needs to see that sort of thing to get fulfillment in his life. You stripped it from me. I know it, and if it's not on the Blu-ray, I might not buy it. I might say no. I rebel. It's a lot of buildup for that one lame joke. Let's keep going. Maybe the first time John Williams has ever really disappointed me. Don't get me wrong, the score is still very nicely done in Awakens, but it seems a lot less prevalent than the past. For the first time in forever, Williams doesn't score a new Star Wars with Rogue One. Actually, it's the first time ever. In his place is veteran Michael Giacchino, taking over command. He delivers! The music isn't more riveting by any means, but it's far more noticeable. But just having it constantly there for me really worked really did. Let's conclude. I think these are both very well made and fun films with their own set of pros and cons, which I, I already told you about, so I'm not going to repeat myself. <laughs> you know, pay attention. <laughs> Ultimately, I choose episode 7 because of the terrific characters and emotional weight of it all, and I'm sure many disagree. I just hope we can keep it civil in the comments. After all, Movie Feuds is built on hope. Another, another call back. Vote for the winner, comment below, and subscribe to Few Nation if you like this content. This is more than just reviews. This is Movie Feuds. In my Star Wars Fish Story spinoff, I hope to see a young CG Harrison Ford coming in cracking wise. Just think of the potential we have now that we have this new tech that everybody knows is 100% fake. <sighs> what the things, the places we can go.